Robert Williams changed the American art scene forever. What have you done? 20 years ago, I went down to the Pike and went into a tattoo shop and looked on the wall and there was some flash and there was two of my cartoon characters up there. I mean, that was like winning the free to Rome. And I was like the highest honor in the world. I mean, I had made it in the human race. My art had been accepted. A painting's got to be pretty self-explanatory to begin with. You know, I don't, I don't want you to have to have a, a, an education in this thing before you even touch it, or it wouldn't be necessary to have a five-page manifesto to explain myself here. We're, we're in a period of time now in art we have been for a long time where abstraction has loosened the rules of art up to such an extent that uh, uh, there is a big de-emphasis on technical ability. And anyone that uh, tends to draw will immediately find themselves categorized as an illustrator. I was greatly alienated with the art world as much as I wanted to be part of it. So I continued doing these real intricate, involved, large oil paintings. A guy named Robert Crumb had started his first comic book <clears throat> called Zap. I was offered the position of being the slick artist to replace Rick Griffin, and I took it. The, the, the underground comics <clears throat> just skyrocketed in popularity and influence. The war in Vietnam had ended in 73, so your big liberal push in the United States took a big dump. People weren't interested in liberal causes anymore, so the comics just took a big <laughs> So then the punk rock movement came in. And when the punk rock movement came, it was like a revolt against this, and it was just like gratuitous sex and violence. I started a series of paintings called Zombie Mystery Paintings. And I figured, well, if I try to paint as fast and shit as I can, with all my experience, at least I can do something interesting. I just started secreting these guys paintings out, you know, just nothing but gratuitous sex and violence with the silliest guy premises, you know, open wounds and shit like that, just nothing but energy, shock and energy. I finally got a gallery to take me and these paintings just started like selling it. So from that point on, I was launched. People in LA knew of me. So you've got a man and a woman in their proper clothing with a little cityscape in the background. So this thing reads 50s, it reads 20th century stock America. Well, they're going through a hoop here into the future. So you see um, a whole new attitude. You see, you see a vanity and arrogance that comes up. I think we all see this in the future. We, we kind of fear this, that uh, t tomorrow is going to get like real arrogant and cocky and we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to deal with it. We're going to lose touch with the future because we just can't bring ourselves to be asinine. You know, you see this in punk rockers, and you see this in uh, Vogue magazine, and you see these real way out fashion things that nobody could possibly wear. These skinny women that are actually anemic and helpless, that are, you know, acting arrogant, and there's like a, a, an attitude there that's it's just like pretentious and nervous. Well, this is, uh, this is the embodiment of that. The art world now is made up of artists called conceptualist and minimalist. The, the, the old school of abstract expression has died. <clears throat> it would be very easy for me to attack these people, you know, because I, I, I can actually paint. And, but I would not, um, I would not uh, turn on these people and um, run these people down. I think it's very important that all these different kinds of art flourish. You know, and I, I would just like to make a niche for myself so that I too can fart through silk. Weird TV.